Our officials today are Mike Eads, Jamie Lucky, and Raymond Steins. It's hard not to have Jeff on my mind a little bit because of what he went through this year, five and two during that period when Coach K was on the shelf with the back surgery. And I think has been an unsung hero to this Duke program because of what he did. They actually improved defensively in the time that he was the interim head coach. That's what, that was his, his main goal, and that actually Mike was in much, much more contact than in 95 when he missed games. But, um, you know, Jeff was, uh, Jeff was right there, and he just said he wanted to get them better for when. They didn't know when he was going to come back. And he did. He does, there's no question he did. There you see the winning is coach in men's college basketball. 13 ACC tournament titles for this program. He just tied Dean Smith for all-time conference tournament wins with that victory yesterday, and the hits just kept on coming. This is their first possession after the Louisville turnover. There's the pressure. You can see they, they couldn't even have, get an entry pass into Jefferson at the high post. Kennard, a step back three. We talked about it, a very slow first half, but then he came out in the second half, hit his first two shots, and was off and running. Donovan Mitchell, he's fouled, and we'll get to the free throw line. Jones got him on a reach in. The other Hall of Famer in this game, Rick Pitino. And you know, he's comfortable here in Brooklyn, New York. His association with the Knicks for a few years. I mean, ima imagine if he hadn't gone up to the pros for that time, oh what goodness. the win totals would be, and maybe, yep. maybe another national championship or two. Carved his niche at the collegiate level at Providence. With Billy the Kid and Delray Brooks in that crew, Yasek Duda, they made it to the Final Four in 1987. And then uh, he was off to the races with his career to the NBA. And then after that, it was on to Kentucky where he got a banner hung in Lexington. He talks very fondly of his three years of Providence. Oh, yeah. He may have enjoyed those as much as any that he's coached. Of course, you know that affection that he has for Billy Donovan. Yep, without a doubt. Dave Gavin helped engineer all of that for him way back in the day. There's Tatum a step back. Why is falling away? Could not get it to go. Just you know, Louisville just looks bigger visually at every single matchup in every position. Here's Snyder with a runner. And Jamie Lucky spots a foul. It'll be a J Jackson over the back that time against Jalen Johnson, who was in position to get that rebound, his first. Well, Donovan Mitchell really shouldered a lot of the load when Snyder was out with that hip flexor issue. And uh, since he's come back, uh, you know, Mitchell very deservingly first team all ACC. Matthew Ang over to Adele. The end gets the offensive rebound to recycle for Louisville. Mitchell off the bounce. Tatum the rebound for Duke. They're going to have to rebound as a, as a five man team out there and not just rely on their Tatum and uh, Jefferson. Jeff Neil lost it, was able to regather and get it into Jackson's hands. This kid's been outstanding. Seven of ten from the floor yesterday when they really needed it. He stepped up. Well, Jackson was really close to the half court line that time, backing up. Kennard with a beautiful runner on the baseline. First field goal for either team. Almost two and a half gone by. With his offhand, too. Johnson trying to back in, had it slapped away by Tatum. Here's the look, and this is what you want to do. You want to uh, you want to force him to his right hand, but uh, showing now, and if he's got the ability to go both ways, he's going to be very tough to stop. And, uh, Duke, because of the lack of size, anything in the post, they've been coming big with uh, Tatum on the double team. One of the things you'll notice about, about left-handers is Mitchell is rejected by Kennard. Is their ability to be ambidextrous? Many are. Kennard illustrated that earlier. Loose ball. And it's last touched by Duke. Well, it was funny that they run up the floor. Kennard actually pushed 
Jackson from behind to let him know. But here's the look, and this is a terrific block from the weak side. Uh, just a timing block. And there was there was nobody back, but Jackson was not able to deliver a, a clean pass. He would have had a good look at a three. Johnson with the dump down. Matthew rejected by Jefferson. Had a little help from Tatum. Who's got, who's got the taller front line? They got two blocks on. And R just lost his dribble. He felt yep. there was contact. No whistle. Adele with his scoop to the hoop is fouled. Over the last month, Dang Adele has really elevated his game to double figures in nine of his last 12. His mid range game has improved. Um, he really, and it's. It really hasn't been one guy all year outside from Mitchell. It's been different guys stepping up at, you know from week to week almost. A reminder tonight it's Virginia Tech Florida State and UVA against Notre Dame. We'll see both of those teams from the Commonwealth make their way onto the floor. Yeah I mean with Virginia Tech uh, you know Zach um, today you know they had a terrific game. 31 and 15. Yeah that's not bad uh, but it's going to be. It's going to be seeing the Manhattan skyline in the front line for Florida State. And then it's just going to be a tempo game for uh, Virginia and Notre Dame. Well, you heard those blue birds for the arrival of Grayson Allen onto the floor. There's Jackson. He's bumped. And we'll get to the free throw line. Alan Johnson picks up the foul his first. I, you know, I, I, it's just been uh, really incredible to watch the growth of Frank Jackson uh, the, into the point guard position. And uh, I think a lot of that he's had to do because of, um, you know, Grayson Allen, all the things that he is going. He was the primary ball handler earlier in the year. But Jackson has really matured. I thought that, uh, as I said earlier, that he and Tatum carried this team yesterday in the first half. His father, Al, a former. Utah State Senators got to be proud. This kid from Alpine, Utah, struggled in the first meeting with Louisville, but he has really developed. Did so at a time of the season when Shishetsky was coming back and towards the end of Jeff Capel's reign as the interim and has found a comfort zone in leading this team as its point guard. There's a wide open Snyder on the wing. And it's over the uh, backboard will be Duke's basketball. One of the things you'll notice about this Duke team is they give a lot of space to, to, to shooters along the perimeter. This is not a um, usual Mike Krzyzewski defensive ball club. Well the numbers would indicate they defend the three very well and uh, what's happening in this game is they've committed to double teaming the post and they get into rotation that's going to give some guys a little bit more of a look. Yeah, you're right. More susceptible to the dribble drives than the three ball. A teardrop for Allen that comes up short, and Mitchell comes down with it. He just he just looks tentative out there, Tim. You know, every shot that he's taken in the last couple of games has been short. Inside to Johnson, wave it off. Jamie Lucky spots a foul prior to that, and it will go against Tatum, his first. Game two of the quarterfinals and a lot more coming up tonight. But right now, the Cardinals and the Blue Devils with the Hall of Famers on the sidelines getting with it. Life of a coach, the work never stops. <laughs> you enjoy your win for about five minutes, then it's right back to focusing your attention on the next opponent at hand. The good part about that is that means you won in advance. But you must put your eyes on the next opponent. Get your game plan in hand. The players go back and relax. But the coaching staff has to prepare the team for the games moving ahead one at a time. Jason, I'm just curious. Are you surprised to see Roy Williams there too? I mean, usually it's the assistants who do the scouting. Yeah. I think what that means, the players are back in the cold tub, getting dressed very slowly, and simply the bus hasn't left yet, <laughs> which allows Coach Williams a few minutes to sit out here and take in the action. Mahmoud got that one to go, and it's now a four to three game. Louisville had gone 0 for their first six from the floor before that make. But Roy, always down deep, is still an assistant coach. You know, he really, it, it, that's his mindset. He'll come out before games, longer before other head coaches would. 
He's uh, accessible to guys like us before games, 90 minutes or so before oh, the game. Yeah, he's been terrific. He's one of the really terrific guys in the industry, uh, as has that young man been and Rick Patino too. We generally would meet with them about 90 minutes before game time in most uh, situations. But Roy especially likes to come out during, uh, unless it's going to be a hostile crowd, he likes to come out even during warm-ups. Right. There's a nice dish inside, and Jalen Johnson uses the glass. Well, if the other big is, a, is a awake in this game, you know, he's going to find himself with some layouts because of Duke's double teaming. That time, the weak side help not coming down in time. And a pretty nice pass from uh, Mahmoud. Another slow start for Duke from the floor, as was the case yesterday. Tatum tries to help that stat. In fact, I think he's going to have to use his perimeter game against Johnson. That's a tough matchup, but uh, Johnson's got some, a size advantage. So maybe face up, maybe that jump shot now opens up a drive in the next couple of possessions. Adele running a curl right from Mahmoud. Little dribble handoff and just kept going towards the 10. You got a double high post. You got a lot of cutting area behind it and a terrific pass over the top. And again, Adele with a, a size mismatch against Kennard. Kennard, good find to Jefferson. First bucket from Hill Jefferson. Johnson with that moving pick is going to be tagged. Allen fought through it, so an offensive foul. Yeah, you see, you watch how everything is kind of cleared out along the back line. And then just to throw over the top into the lane. Well to see play. They'll play, they'll run that offense where they have four across the free throw line and it allows for cutting. Been very tough to defend. Giles just into the game and he gets into the scoring column. That's a good sign from that young man who's been hampered with injuries throughout his early career in college. Well, they need they need him desperately today uh, with the, the size that Louisville has to match up against that. And that's a big confidence builder, I think, for him to get his first bucket. Runs down this rebound off the deck, off the miss from Spalding. Just got into the game for Louisville, number 13 in white. They'll run a bunch of guys into that front line for Rick Pitino. Tatum. Will jump stop Deuce in the lane. Well, the same type of offense, really, for Duke that, uh, that you know, no post presence. Giles was lurking on the offensive glass, but Tatum had the whole middle of the floor to, to work. High low into my move. He got Giles airborne and banked it home. Thought it might a little bit of a force on that play. Dark jerseys around him, but uh, he has a lot of confidence playing against this team. Nas Mahmoud, Cairo, Egypt, by way of West Oaks Academy. Great cut by Allen and Kennard found him. Yeah, and that's uh, Donovan Mitchell just falling asleep on the weak side and. Talk about confidence boosts. I mean, nothing has been going right for Allen for a while, but uh, that was a beautiful play. In defense of his shot being short some, you know, he doesn't have the lift that he once did. He's been injured, no doubt about that. Spalding gets the finger roll for the answer. It's 13 to 12. But that said, the issues for Grayson go beyond, obviously, just that. Been out of sync, and he went from facilitator to now playing a lot off the ball with the emergence of Jackson. Canard. That's a yeah, terrific defense. So again, the length of Adele forces him maybe a step outside of his range, which is considerable. Snyder on a blow by. Wow, what a nice move. He was very smooth with that move. Junior from Louisville, Ballard High. Yeah, I and mean, nobody, regardless of who, you know, how high you can jump, you, that floater is a deadly weapon, and nobody was going to block it. Brought back memories of guys like Lancaster Gordon. That sweeping move of his. <laughs> start using stuff from the millennials and all. <laughs> <laughs> well, the 80s were a great period for Louisville. 
I'll go Junior Bridgman for you later <laughs> if you like. As Tatum throws that one up as the clock was winding down. Four turnovers committed by Duke. See if Allen can get off the schneid after that reversal. A good one here in our second quarterfinal. The cards up by only one. 14-13 Louisville with the lead almost halfway through the opening 20 minutes here. How about that uh, a young Rick Patino at St. Dominic over in um, Oyster kinda, Bay. Kind of looks, uh, boy, the apple didn't fall too far from the tree. It looks like Richard right there. No question. <laughs> if, if he didn't have the bangs and he just went back with the hair, I, I agree with you. Rick, of course, was born in Manhattan. And uh, his influence, greatest influence in terms of his uh, coaching pedigree was the great Hubie Brown and impacted him tremendously in his early days. Actually was an assistant at Syracuse with, with Bayheim and, 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 and met actually he and his wife when they originally married stayed with with uh, Jim and later he introduced Bayheim to his future wife through Kentucky. Stays there in the Commonwealth. Nice work there by Mitchell. Yeah, and that's uh, that's an issue that Duke has had this year, uh, guarding uh, drive, dribble drive penetration. No real rim rim protector back there, and Duke going with a little bigger lineup with Jefferson and Giles on the floor at the same time. Stutter stuff, but Jones is rejected. Boy, it's a beautiful play there by Snyder. Out to a down. Hey, he's been a, he's been a different player for this team over the last month, and that he just outran everybody. Giles. Not there, and it's pulled down by Mahmoud, and Nas gets it out. This guy, is, his motor is running. Snyder is the engine right now. Mitchell with that scoop to the hoop, and then a frustration foul after Jefferson had come away with it. Donovan picks up the foul. There's the look, and you just see this poor transition defense by Duke. Nobody back that time, no floor balance. And dang Adele finishing strongly. Oof. Now an eight nothing run for Louisville and they lead by five. And not only that but Adele doing it on the defensive end too. Kennard has not been able to see anything. Tatum unable to get that one to go. And you see how quickly they transition. There's Snyder. A 360 move. Well, he is so good in the open floor and uh, didn't even really have numbers that time. Created that by himself, a one man fast break. Little resistance that time in transition from Duke. There's now a 10 0 run for Louisville. Jackson, that's a block and one. He's fearless, uh, fearless and tough. You know, two good qualities that Mike values. And uh, here's the look. I mean, watch Kennard. Nothing he can do about this, and nobody behind him. That's just a terrific move. And then Jackson going strong to the hole and uh, having the concentration. He kept his eye on the rim, Tim, even though he was drawing contact and had the concentration to make that play. Dane Adele got the foul. But the three point play is completed and it's 20 to 16. Look how quick Snyder is. He is blowing right by Blue Devils. This time they do get back in transition a little better. Kennard was the only guy offering resistance the last time down. The first time they, it's, it's the first time they extended their defense to him up the floor. And that took a little time, maybe trying to throw Louisville out of their rhythm in the half court. Jackson. Rejected by Mahmoud. And it's that rim protection that Louisville has that puts them at an advantage. Under the Brooklyn Bridge. And this year would be a seated where they are in this tournament, but they are. It says so much about the strength and depth of this league. Having to play a second day. We're accustomed to seeing them coming out 
on this day, like Louisville and like North Carolina. Well, and boy, and Tatum uh, sees a big cover first, and then Matthew also coming over. Uh, Jackson nails a tray, and it's 20 to 19. Twenty points in that game with against Clemson yesterday, and as I mentioned, seven of ten shooting. Well, and he commits the foul here. Well, and it was it was kicked first, but uh, there was they, they called the foul, and here's the look, and this is where Duke gets a lot of their three second chance opportunities. But all of a sudden now, Frank Jackson picks up his second foul. Right. Adele falling away. Nice rebound there. Levitch just into the game. David Levitch, but unable to corral it and get any points out of it. Number 23, the senior from Goshen, Kentucky, just into the game. See him and Ryan McMahon, one of the great walk on turned scholarship players. Had some big moments at Syracuse and at home against Virginia Tech in a game we had. We see him later. There's Jefferson, short armed that one, and it's pulled away by Adele. Mitchell trailing him. Great work on the boards again by Louisville. And that's leading to another third, foul. That's the third on uh, Jackson. Yeah, that's three. They did not get him out in time. Grayson Allen was ready to come in, and Kay couldn't get him in fast enough as Jackson picks up the foul, and he is some perturbed with that call. That's a big hit for Duke right now, and this is going to be a time of race now. Counted and one, Spalding, and Shashevsky is still staring down Mike Eads. Well, this is a uh, this is a veteran crew, and uh, they won't be intimidated by either of these coaches. But that's just a, a great play. You got to avoid that uh, straight line pass from an underneath out of bounds that leads directly to a basket. Louisville by three. How many times, though, have you seen that? Coaches know they're trying to identify, get a guy out of the game that's got two, and then all of a sudden he's in the wrong place at the wrong time, and he gets a third. And now Spalding and Tatum get locked up. Yep. Spalding is going to be. It was WWE yes, in there in the low post for a while. Well, let's take a look at our Honda dealers of the Carolinas top 25 and you see both of these teams in that group. Three of those teams will be playing later on this evening. It's going to be a great night of college basketball too. Magnificent afternoon but a fantastic evening ahead for our friends Wes Durham and Dan Bonner. Allen a pull up. That one was long. He'll try again for three. Oh, the iron unkind to Allen. Boy, and then Snyder almost double dribbled that time. Mitchell. Pulled down by Kennard. We touched on the uh, shooting for Allen and his lift. Jason's got more on that. Jason? Well, Tim, Grayson Allen was asked after the game yesterday, has his confidence waned a bit because his playing time has dropped? He hasn't put the ball in the hole. He emphatically said no. He's the same confident player. And with Brayton Jackson saddled with fouls here in the first half, they're going to need their junior to step up and produce on both sides of the ball for the Blue Devils. Well, you're absolutely right about that. Here's Tatum. Great shot in the open floor. And, uh, Jason, too, that may have to carry over into the second half with him with three fouls. You know, it wouldn't be surprised if Grayson Allen started. You have to protect Frank Jackson. He's a young player, plays with so much toughness and energy, but a lot of times he simply can't help himself. Those three fouls are crucial for a team that lacks depth, especially at the guard position, G-Man. Yeah, you know, Jason, and I think, too, that maybe an upperclassman might have seen Grayson Allen over at the bench or over at the scorer's table waiting to come in and say, all right, I got to be a little passive here and wait for the next dead ball. It really was the, one of those bang-bang plays yeah. off of a rebound, and you're going for it. Your instincts take over at that point. But to your point, I agree. Time and score usually come into the head of a veteran player, yeah. not a freshman. But uh, Grayson <laughs> Allen is uh, – See, 
the other the other side of that is when I saw somebody coming in for me, I got a shot up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's our principal stats so far in the first half. What uh, jumps out at you? Well, here? the lack of three point shooting for Duke, only one of five. And you talked about how good Louisville is. Actually, both of these teams very good at defending the three. But that had to be a that has to be a big component, a, a big component, a big stat for Duke this afternoon. Giles is back on the floor. Number one got stuck here. Beautiful pass inside. A nice entry to Mathieu. Well, he did a nice job. He, he, was, he ducked in on that uh, little screen roll at the top and got Tatum pinned. Allen to a wide open Jones, and he can't connect. Allen tried to keep it alive but could not. Spalding gets it out. Snyder all the way to the end of E.J. King. Well, King just coming back. He missed uh, he missed some time with uh, injuries, but uh, really kind of rounding into shape. Splits time with uh, Deng Adele at the small forward. Now we talk often, Mike, about how quick Allen is rejected but fouled here by Mitchell. We talk often about how quickly Kentucky and North Carolina and UCLA get the ball down the floor. These guys are pretty quick too. Well, you see the duck in right there. You, you catch the ball that deep. There's no way to stop it. And then this was a nice catch and finish. That was not an easy lob to come up with. But King, I'll tell you what, Louisville has really done a terrific job running the floor here early. Haven't shot the ball particularly well, but their transition buckets have been there. And again, you just see how quickly Mike, they can play up and down the floor with those interchangeable parts, both in the backcourt as well as the front court. And they haven't really pressed as much in uh, this this year and they're in this game like uh, Rick Patino's teams have been known to do, but their half court defense has been unbelievable. Back in for the Cardinals, number 23, David Levich. Levich is uh, back into the fray now for Louisville. Number being said to him, they haven't been able to separate from Duke yet. Yeah. You know, four point game, and, uh, you know, Duke, Duke defending pretty well as well. Jefferson back on the floor now for the Devils. There's Snyder. Boy, this is a strong move by Quentin. It's, it's been the perimeter people driving that have given them issues. Uh, they tried to go to their post players early, but they've gone away from that a little bit. Kennard follows his own shot and gets the roll, plus one. All of Louisville's players got buried along the baseline, Tim, and the ball just bounced right back to Kennard. Good job of following your own shot. This is going to be good from beginning to end. 360 drive, straight lines. Duke and Louisville. Two Titans. Blowout though inside the paint for Louisville. They've been devastating in there. Yeah, but it's a, it's a 10 point uh, gap of uh, points in the paint. And, uh, Louisville's done a nice job getting out and running and also finding guys inside. 24 14, they lead in that category. Patino's team up by four with 335 to play. Some of that defense of the three point line is aided by just some poor shooting or rushed shots to some extent. Neither team really lighting it up at this stage, but both rely so heavily on uh, their transition games, too. And Louisville's had the better of that aspect, at just, least here in the first half. You didn't, if we didn't have the score up on the, um, on the screen and you just did the eye test, you'd think that uh, Louisville would have a much bigger lead than it does. Indeed. Canard at the line after the foul by Snyder and gets the roll for the old fashioned three point play. So it's 28 25. Dang Adele back on the floor out of the timeout. Number 22 in white. Gets a pick from Spalding. And VJ King will pump. It's an air ball. Near save there by Mathieang. And Allen comes out of there with it. Feeds Tatum. Wow, strong move by Tatum. What a magnificent performer. 
this freshman has been. Yeah, he, he really, we talked about it, carried him in the first half yesterday, doing the similar thing today. Could have settled for that three if he wanted to, Tim, but really attacked the basket well. Adele pumps. And he plays the nylon song. He gets going from there. Look out. He's got eight on the day. Scored there double figures 19 times this year. And he's been playing, which you have to for Rick Pitino and Mike Krzyzewski. Play both ends of the floor. He's defending well as well. And that's a big confidence builder right there. Yeah, he needed that. His first three. And it's 31 to 30. Grayson Allen. Trying to defend Quentin Snyder, too. Oh, high low game. Matthew right back to Spalding. Those bigs, uh, both sets of bigs that they have are very good interior passers. Giles and Jefferson in the game together. And King is going to be. Guilty of that foul reaching in on Kennard. One, one time now for the Blue Devils. Coming up on the Hardy's halftime report, we'll preview the games coming up tonight. The other quarterfinal matchups Tom Wormy and Corey Alexander will look ahead and look back at what happened earlier today as North Carolina dominated Miami in our first quarterfinal matchup. That's all coming up on the Hardy's halftime report. You know, we talk about teams and their their first action. Um, you know, and, and Louisville in that first four minutes of the game, Tim looked like a team that hadn't played in the tournament yet. You know, they were a little little tentative, little out of sync, but that that went away quickly. They lead by two now, with 140 remaining in the half. Spalding put it on the deck, and Tatum with the pilfer. Snyder reaches in, stops what would have been perhaps a dunk on the other end by committing the foul, but it's the second foul on Quinton. There's the look inside, and uh, really nice dig in that time by Giles and Tatum, the two freshmen teaming up. And that's what uh, I think that's what everybody envisioned from game one with this group that came in. But, uh, because of injuries, uh, three of them were really slow to get on the court. It's interesting, Mike, so often people talk about, particularly with teams like this that know they're going to play the following week, yeah, just how much do you really need this? Do the coaches really want to dig into the legs before they get into the next tournament? You know, historically, you watch, you know, this Blue Devils team with Mike Krzyzewski at the helm, they, they seem to get energized come conference well, tournament time. I'll guarantee you that Mike Krzyzewski comes to tournaments to win. Yeah. As does Rick Pitino. He's won five tournament titles at five different schools. He does. So that, yeah. uh, you know, that tells you right there what it means to him. Foul goes against Grayson Allen, his first, and it's a one and one coming. Some teams, when they are lacking depth, the coaches would tell you after the fact, yeah, well, a little rest probably wouldn't hurt. Uh, both of these teams, though, will get into their bench somewhat. Well, actually, you look at you look at Duke, and uh, they've played seven guys. Most of the season, and, and, you're right. And Louisville in this game has played ten already, and eight of them have scored. That's right. So uh, does that become a big factor in the second half against the team that played yesterday? Usually it's revisionist history when a team gets knocked out early and their fan base is looking for an out. And they'll say, well, we probably needed the rest anyway. Well, you know what? That's what I think it was great. And I know all the coaches like going. Tatum. Wow. Going to, oh, go, going to the Saturday night final, which gives you that extra day of rest before the NCAA following week rather than the traditional Sunday final that the ACC had had. Yep. Mahmoud picked up that foul. And we've touched on this many times, and particularly in today's game, 
the freshness of the legs and the many timeouts that they get and receive through the course. You're going to stay healthy. You're going to stay ready to go through most of those games, no matter how many conference tournament games you play. Frankly, I think it, it's it's a better showcase for the league to have a primetime Saturday night game as opposed to a 1:30 game on Selection Sunday. No question. One of the best moves I think that the Atlantic Coast Conference has made is moving that championship to Saturday. Tied at 35. Mahmoud. Please. That's a really good pass to Adele. Laser light, really. Mahmoud stays with it. Well, I love the way he stick to him. And he's fouled. Tatum's a little upset with that whistle. But Mahmoud just outfought Duke underneath the rim that time. Which is he's not, he's not the biggest guy. I mean, you talked about him being from uh, Cairo, Egypt. He went home this summer and lost 30 pounds. Yeah. All the, the you know the weight that he put on, but uh, he just stayed with this play and used his length to get on the glass. I think Tatum feels better about the whistle now that it was Giles yeah. who committed the foul, not him. Just a 50% free throw shooter. Misses both here. Yeah, he's got really nice form. It's he's got a surprise. He makes you think that it's uh, more mental than anything. Tatum on a blow by right to Giles. Freshman to freshman. And the Duke contingent Timmy, is went, on its feet. He went through three Cardinals that time to make that play, and now all Giles had to do is finish it off. Mahmoud, how about that dexterity, huh? Wow, wow. Ability to put it on the floor and finish. He made that look easy. This will be a 30 second timeout taken by the Blue Devils. 30 second timeout for Duke because they'll hold it for the last one, but how about these two yeah. sequences here? Oh, yeah, he, he had two guys to pick from. Jefferson was on the other side. So a little bit of a look off right there. Here's the look, and uh, I don't think uh, Mike Krzyzewski was very happy with uh, Harry Giles defensively on that play. This is shaping up as a whale of a finish. Yeah, yeah like, again, it, it may come down to, in the second half, freshness and legs and bodies. Remember this, though. Duke has managed to stay right with Louisville with Jackson sitting with three fouls and he likely will sit a good portion of if not the beginning of the second half. I think Duke is going to have to have a big game from behind the arc in the second half and uh, so you know to kind of overcome the size factor and uh, maybe let's see if Kennard gets going like he did yesterday in the second half came out his, his first two shots. Now Grayson Allen handles it with uh, Jackson sitting down yeah, only played 12 minutes of this half. See how he does in the second. It's the high pick from Giles. Got his man airborne. We'll get to the line. Matthew Yang commits the foul. You know, I, I think that Grayson Allen has really settled in in this game, Tim. He's, he, you know, he came in a little shaky early, but now, you know, he knows. All right, there's no substitution. Matt Jones coming into the game, but uh, he, he knows that he's got to step up. With Jackson with those three fouls and he's responding and that may psychologically be helpful to him because Jackson is going to be stuck on that bench for quite some time. Yeah. I mean it, it, in fact as we said he could be a lot of times coaches will sit guys with three fouls in the opening moments of the second half just to protect them. And Giles played very well in the time that he was in there. Jones is back on the floor now for Duke. Seven in the game here for Grayson. So you got to watch out, uh, keep an eye on McMahon here, and uh, look out for a rush up the floor and a kick out three. Yep, he is a sharpshooter. Red shirt freshman from Sarasota, Ryan McMahon. It's Levitch instead. And we've reached the intermission. Blue Devils close with a flurry. And great Kate Ballon. Shire and the entire staff have confidence in the young man. He's taken some great steps during this period, no doubt about it. Not only that, but trust in him that he can play and defend. Now, if I'm if I'm Louisville, and the Duke gets possession to start. If I'm Louisville, I'm going right at him, whoever uh, whoever he's guarding. 
Jefferson always looking to pass first. Here he is driving forward, and it's going to be a foul against Louisville. Very, very aggressive move for a guy playing with three as Matthew Yang gets the foul. Well, and, and Matthew Yang is not going to, he's going to be more of a shot block step in and take the charge so I think it was a smart play by Jackson to go in and absorb that and uh, once again Duke starting with the way they did in the first half of getting to the free throw line. And he played a stint of four straight games where he averaged just under 19 a game. Just under five rebounds. He got on quite a roll, and I, I agree with you. I think that uh, the fact that he is starting this second half sends a strong message about what the leadership of this program thinks he's become. I also thought that in the last five minutes of the first half, that Grayson Allen looked a lot more comfortable. Tim, I don't know if you agree with me. No but, question. Uh, you know, yeah. he was a little, t really tentative at first. Nice work inside with the left hand. By Mango Mathieu. Let's see if that changes uh, Duke electing that time to not double team. And uh, Mathieu just had an easy one dribble into a hook shot. Jones to Jefferson, rejected by Mitchell. And he can do that many times over. As a backcourt player, he gets as many rejections as a lot of post personnel. And there's a three ball from Dang Adele. And that's, uh, that's what Rick Patino has built all of his programs around, turning uh, defense into offense, get the block on one end and then the open three on the other. One of those programs that charts deflections as much as it charts steals at Louisville. They're not, they're not real wide bodies out there, Tim. It's just so long. And they just, you know, when something looks open, it closes up quickly. Yeah, that's one of the reasons I think watching Tatum, his game has not been as affected by Louisville defensively because he's got the length to get over some of the Louisville defenders. That runner won't fall for Mitchell, and it's pulled down by Tatum. It's been a tough first uh, day of action for him. One of seven in the game, one of eight now. Tatum, not this time. Out of bounds, last touched by Jones. Here's the look, and again, you in the you know, fighting. Jefferson is fighting down there, but no double team coming and in the good finish. And this is just a terrific job by Donovan Mitchell. Then you get scattered when in transition, you lose your guy, and uh, he's able to pull up and shoot a three. Adele will trigger it in. High pick from Matthew Yang, well defended by Duke. Johnson jump stop, and he goes with the jump hook. Early on here, and to extend in the first half, and then they kind of went away from it, but the post players for Louisville have had a lot of success here early. Well, both teams counter punching here in the first two and a half minutes of the second half. Kennard, too strong off the window, and it's pulled down by Johnson. Adele, bring it up. Yeah, you see, you know, for Kennard, he's just seeing size everywhere he turns around, and it's really affecting his shot, but that was just an incredible end-to-end -end run. Jackson, not there. Quick clear by Adele. Right to Snyder. Quicker to the ball. Quite a burst. And a timeout for Duke. Yeah, see that shot. There was, if Jackson's going to attack the basket or shoot the shot of him from the baseline, there's got to be rotation back. That was too easy of a run for Louisville. Jackson, then ring one up for Adele. And then Quinton Snyder with a crossover pass Canard. Count it. And the cards lead by six. That's 56 seconds, and they've shot five of six in the second half to take a six-point lead. See that run right there, 11-2 over the last 235. Six unanswered, though, and here's Tatum trying to force the issue. He blocked. That was blocked by Matthew Yang. Yeah, and it's, uh, again, length bothering a shot. Tatum tried to answer on the other end. 
Got him with the body too. Did not allow the dunk though, and that was probably a good foul. Well, you look at Matthew in his last two games coming into this tournament, averaging 15 points, 10 and a half rebounds. Then down the other end, just a great job attacking the rim, and that's what gets the foul. He didn't get the dunk, but uh, running the floor really well. Second foul on Tatum and Mango Mathiang at the free throw line. Coming off an 18 point performance against Notre Dame, had 11 rebounds, so a double double in that game. You know, Grayson Allen about to check in for the first time. He will play. He will play. And Matt Jones will sit down, so he and Jackson will be on the floor together. You know, Tim, and for you know for Tatum, it's not just that he's got uh, being defended by Biggs. On the other end, he's got to defend guys taller him who can score and put pressure on him as well. Let's see how Duke responds. Trailing by eight, largest lead of the afternoon for the Cardinals. Giles back on the deck. Mitchell in all out denial. Beautiful cut by Tatum. And that's where uh, Jalen, Jalen Johnson got his head turned. Every, all the action was up around the free throw line. And that, uh, that backdoor cut was there. On a blow by. Yeah, you're you're going you're gonna to see that, I think, uh, for the rest of the half. Uh, if they're not going right into the post, that the, both he and Snyder are going to be aggressive off the drive. Jackson pinched along that sideline there by Snyder, gives it up. Good things have happened when Tatum's gotten the rock. Shot clock at five and Allen drives. Smart play by Allen, understanding that he was up against the clock and it's 52 to 46. Well, I don't know that, Tim, but I think against this front line, the floater is the best shot instead of trying to take it in all the way and uh, he just pull up a little bit and he did a nice job that time. Snyder with an answer. That's a three ball. 55 to 46. We only had one in the first half, already two in the second half. Seven of eight now. Allen again hangs in the air this time, gathers himself, and on the putback can't get it to go. Pulled out by Snyder. Allen out time. Boy, that would have been majestic. It didn't go for King. And Allen comes out of there with it. I don't know that that was the smartest play at all by Jalen Johnson. Yep. Now that, unless you're going to make that, yep. you're going to catch it and come down with it. Oh. oh, boy, that was right there for Giles. Couldn't get it to go. I said King. It was Johnson that had the opportunity at the oop. He came off the back iron. I guess that, that those type of plays drive a coach crazy. Yeah, they do. Loose ball situation and 50 50 goes to Jackson. Would have counted had it gone. The foul will be against Snyder. Talk about fearless. That was a one on three break. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to steal points whenever they can. Snyder picks up his third. A lot of action with not much production offensively. End to end for the right to play North Carolina. Easy feed over the top. Uh, he's just having himself quite a game already. We talked about his improved play over the last month or so, but uh, he has been a factor today offensively out in the open floor. Very efficient 15 points, five of eight from down from the field, two of three from behind the arc. And uh, all their bigs can really run the floor. A little bit like Tatum, too. I just think he's a tough cover for Duke. And if I'm, yeah, and if, 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 if I'm you know, Rick Patino, Put my foot on the gas a little bit yep. here to try to get into Duke's legs over this uh, final 14 minutes. Tatum is the one guy that Louisville has problems with, and Duke, and I think Adele is the guy that troubles the Duke defense. Allen with a big time three there. Well, I just almost see a little bit of the old Grace now and now, and that's again an opportunistic three off an offensive rebound and uh, a nice kick out by Giles. Mitchell off the back iron. My move fighting for it with Giles. Tie ball with the arrow to Louisville. 
Donovan Mitchell is not going to stop shooting. I mean, he's not having a great afternoon. So you can, great players can shed uh, this, the, re the rest of this game and get hot. Jason's got more on Giles. The Duke Blue Devils haven't used this big lineup much throughout the season, but Harry Giles has stepped in this game, doing a nice job on both ends, really protecting the rim. You saw a big time rebound there for the kickout. He's made great passes as a facilitator as well against such a towering front line. They need him to step up, and he's producing for the Blue Devils here in the second half, G Man. Yeah, Jason, we saw him in the first half uh, playing with Emil Jefferson as well. So uh, Mike Krzyzewski using that three man rotation, keeping those two bigs in there at the same time, which they really have to against this front line for Louisville. And he's such a talented player, he hasn't been healthy all season but you see him just trying to do the little things came in with that big reputation a guy that could dominate the game scoring now it's about doing winning things that can help this team continue to progress defend rebound and he's doing a nice job in the ball screens as well Mitchell from downtown as you mentioned <laughs> how prophetic Mike he won't stop shooting. Well, in his mind now, he's one for one. Yeah. All right, the, yeah. the other nine shots, they you know, you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this, I'm, I'm hot now, I'm going. And Patino begs guys like that to shoot. Please keep shooting. Turn down a great look. May not get another one close. Allen, not this time. On the deck, Mitchell comes down with it. You know, no coach ever had a beg me to shoot. <laughs> Ask my teammates. Wow, down! One. You know, he, he he could be the difference maker for this Louisville team and how far they go in the tournament, in uh, not just this tournament, but in the NCAA tournament as well. That's just an absolute blur going past Grayson Allen. He gets his second. Now, if you're 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 a team and you're playing, and you just hit a three, but you, Donovan Mitchell having the afternoon. That he's having, you think a pretty good chance in this game. Yeah. But Adele has stepped up and uh, provi provided the lift offensively. He had a quiet game on Saturday against Notre Dame, but that was following a pretty big outburst against Wake. 19 games he had double digits this year, double doubles, 12 points, 12 rebounds one time earlier this season. He has just been a very difficult cover today. Well, they gambled and lost in that sequence, Louisville, and Kennard, the recipient, with an easy snowbird to make it 61-51. Yeah, it was a front-loaded press, and uh, there was nobody behind to protect the rim at, all, at any cost. And once the Duke got past that first line, it was easy. Spalding, good look to Mitchell. Hicks just into the game, finds Donovan again. It goes crying off the front iron. It was that same spot where he knocked down the three before. Bernard has just had no openings. He's uh, had no good looks at all in this game. It's amazing how the Hall of Fame coaches know how to take away the other team's best option. Yep. Krzyzewski thrives on that too. Tatum and one. The foul on Mitchell. Just a mismatch right there, and Tatum knew what to do with it as soon as he had the shorter defender. He's got 18 now. Well, believe it, Tatum and Allen have 31 points. The rest of the team, 22 combined. They need that third and fourth scorer to step up. Tony Hicks, the senior from South Holland, Illinois, goes back to the bench for Louisville. So it's now Spalding along with Adele. Levitch has come into the game. He replaced Hicks, number 23, and White. Well, it's no surprise. I mean, we, we, the Tatum, you know, has emerged as that best player from that group along with uh, Jackson. Tatum was the first one to come back from the injury, so he was more advanced with time on the floor. That's a good, good block out by Kennard, forcing the foul from Spalding. That's his second timeout. Duke maintains contact down seven. <laughs> Anytime. Got one right down the street that we visit back home in Louisiana. My son Noah can destroy another <laughs> blooming onion by himself. <laughs> well, Blue Devils were, I thought for a moment there, on the edge, and, and they got some answers, some really good ones, with the help of Tatum and, and Grayson Allen 
to boot. And have maintained contact as a result. Down only seven with just under 12 to play. You know, Tim, I mean, if I'm Louisville in that huddle like Rick Tino, I think they've fallen in love with the jump shot a little bit. And uh, they need to start driving the ball and getting it into the paint. It's a 40 to 26 advantage there. They can't, they've forgotten what got them the lead. Canard out there. Bolden is in the game. He kept that one alive, and Grayson Allen saved it. Jones is flying free on this wing. Canard takes it instead. Bolden kept that one alive with a punch out. Canard, not this time. Mahmoud with a quick outlet. And here goes Adele with a two on one. Miss dunk again, and Tatum picks up the foul. Hey, please. Uh, you know, once again, you got to finish that play. But Duke was buried. On that little scrum inside, nobody backed it, only one player back defensively. Good outlet pass by Mahmoud that time. Oh. Yeah, I mean, you gotta you have to you know foul or not, you have to finish that play. Spalding missed yet another dunk off of the heel, and that foul against Tatum is his third. Ray Spalding, sophomore from Louisville. Trinity High School. See the depth right now. Louisville's played 11 players. <laughs> yeah. Only seven of them have played significant minutes. But even that, just that short little stretch for nope. Snyder with yep. Levitch pays dividends in the last uh, 11 minutes. No question. <laughs> Allen sweeping and off of the glass. Beautiful shot. He's been very, very important to Duke's play. He has 15, and they're only down by six. If not for, uh, if not for him, they'd be buried in this game. And uh, maybe that type of play gets Kennard some more looks. Well, he got his wake-up call, or the memo, one or the other, after his escapade yesterday. Loose ball. Mahmoud is on the deck. And we've got a uh, quick timeout taken after possession was picked up by Louisville. Smart Eddie play there. Well, woofing going on as the teams separate. Here's, here's the look, and this is like the old Grayson Allen uh, of last year in the, the championship game. Partner, I'm going to disagree with you on that timeout. I don't like that play in the second half. Okay. First, first half, not bad. Second half, those timeouts are too valuable. They, the, they had the possession arrow anyway. Right. So, you know, you, you lose a timeout, you still would have had the ball. Team performance last night. Or Buzz Williams' club. Snyder with the dump down to Spalding, but there's a foul whistle prior to that. You know, talk about a team that can come at you in waves just to follow on tonight's action, Florida State. I mean, size and length, and uh, this is probably the best scoring team that Leonard Hamilton has had. You can get Isaac going with uh, Bacon and look out. Yep. They are just devastating. And you talk about length. You know, this is a Louisville team that's got plenty of it on its low block. Florida State's got it out front in its, you, know, you name it, they've got length. How many teams can start a seven footer and come in with seven four? <laughs> Absolutely. Ojo has really improved over time. Free throw shooting has been outstanding too. Snyder lost it. Tatum all the way. One of the first really open court looks that Duke has had in this game, a good run out. Here come the Dukies at the halfway mark of the second with a 9-1 run of their own. They were teetering about four minutes ago. Snyder on the win. Spalding the follow. Well, and that Duke playing zone in that possession, and it's a little bit tougher to block out than the good offensive rebound. 64-58. Jackson and Giles will come in on the next dead ball for Coach Gay. Tatum on his own. Pulled down by Spalding. Quick outlet to Snyder. Duke still on its heels. Snyder can't get it to go. Halfway through the cylinder and out. I don't know that Duke can really send a lot of people to the offensive glass, Tim. It's just Louisville has been so fast up the floor. You've got to get back in transition defense. That's got to be a reach on Mitchell, and that's his fourth. 
ill-advised decision there by Donovan to get his arm out right in front of Raymond Steins, who tagged him with the foul. Right now, David Levitch is going to come in for him. Well, I mean, no disrespect, but uh, you're losing a first team all ACC player probably I would imagine maybe about five minutes. So this is a big opportunity for Duke to uh, you know, they carved into this lead but really get into it. By the way Levitch as soon as he got out there applied an arm bar to Allen and Mike Eads quickly blew his whistle came out to say uh oh we're yeah. not doing that here fella. Well, right away here we go. Yeah, and it's uh, right know, away here we go. And Levitch trying going in there and uh, you know and trying to get under Grayson Allen's skin and trying to get him to do something. Yeah. And uh, you know that well, was apparent. That was apparent to Eads right as he came into the game. Yes. Yeah. He came over to talk to him. Levitch clearly had that in mind, and now Jamie Lucky is letting Patino know. Yeah, and it's and then actual Louisville's one far away from putting it into uh, you know putting them into the penalty. Jamie Lucky is giving him a warning. Now. Oh, he's giving he Patino a, a warning for being outside of the coach's box. Yeah. I think. And there was clearly some intent for Levitch to get in Grayson Allen's kitchen yep. as soon as he came into the game. As I mentioned, Mike Eats, nice piece of officiating to come and warn him, and then you saw what happened. And now falling down, Allen will get the foul. That's a flop after the fact, but Levitz did commit the foul. And I think Rick Pitino has to get him out of the game. Uh, this is uh, now, isn't it ironic that Levitz is getting called out for the fouls <laughs> on Grayson Allen? Yeah, yeah. Now listen, it's a legitimate foul. Levitz clearly fouls him here, no doubt about it. But watch Grayson flop after the fact. And, that's and then, oh, by the way, the knee goes up as well. Well, we got Louisville fans <laughs> on one side of it and yeah. Duke fans on the other side of it. I don't know who's yeah. winning it. Well, all due respect, and listen, both of these programs are storied, historic programs. Levitch came in with direct intent on getting into Grayson Allen's head. No doubt about that. And, uh, to, you know, to his credit, this may be. This, this may be helping him. And Allen will now sit down and Coach K gives him an embrace. Yep. <laughs> Coach K actually getting telling the fans to give Allen a standing ovation. Snyder. Great ball movement right back to Clinton. Too strong. Spalding lost it to Kennard. When was the last time Louisville got anything going to the basket or in the lane? How do you do? We're tied at 64. And the emotions of that moment, that engagement with Levitch, has led to a Duke run. No question about it. Tim, when do we see this last? How about Wake Forest? Yeah, absolutely. You know, same type of deal. Right. Game well in hand, all of a sudden things get a little chippy. And then the Blue Devils as a playing around it. And Grayson Allen has now become the catalyst for success as opposed to what happened earlier this year for him. Yeah, Kennard uh, only his first made three of the game, but couldn't have come at a more opportune time. And talk about a guy who can put things behind him. Yeah. Now they are uh, that that fourth personal foul on Donovan Mitchell is really looming large is, at yeah. this part of the game. In lieu of what happened after that, particularly. Tatum missed the first. One of the great things about college basketball. It's an emotional game. And emotions can take over and ride for periods of time that allow teams to get on scoring runs. Right now, Duke with their first lead since it was 40 to 39. Very early. And because of foul trouble, Duke sitting in that 2 3 zone. Oh, oh, down! Yes, and one. An answer from the cards. Back 
listen to this word from your local ACC stations. Efficient again scoring for him. 7 of 11 from the floor. 21 points now. Almost perfect from the line. Completed the three-point play with the free throw at 67 to 65. And you can expect some quick whistles the rest of the way. Emotionally charged the last few moments. And uh, two more Louisville fouls, and they'll be in the double bonus. Yep. Duke sitting at six right now, team fouls. Allen comes back in for Jones. Jalen Johnson got that foul, his third. All right, now you got, look at the four weapons you have out on the floor. You got Frank Johnson on the ball, and on the, on the wings, you've got Tatum and Allen and Kennard. Winner of this game takes on North Carolina, the top seed in the New York Live 2017 ACC tournament. Winners today over Miami earlier. Jalen Johnson at the top of the, the zone tried to get him some touches and maybe some high low action. Little possession really going nowhere. Snyder, that's a good find. King, a runner, baseline. B.J. King, the freshman from Cleveland, Ohio, has four. That was a pretty good finish on that play. Shot clock was on his back, about three seconds left. See if Allen stays aggressive. He has been in this game and has been very productive. A little mix-up that time between he and Jackson leads to a turnover. Well, Mahmoud really did a nice job of hedging on that screen, and he really was just kind of spying Allen. It forced him to pull up. First Duke turnover in the second half. Well, ironic is it that Mike Krzyzewski learned a lot about this zone from Jim Beheim. Yeah, absolutely. Adele has it rejected by Giles. Numbers for Duke. Kennard, count it. Well, Adele was slow coming down the floor after that play, and it was a five on four situation, and nobody got to Kennard. Mahmoud. Working in on Giles, and that's going to be a foul on the youngster, his third. And you see Donovan Mitchell over there cheering on his team. Here's a look, a nice play by Giles to help out on the back side of that zone. And then again, just in transition, Kennard took a look around and make sure nobody was coming down from behind. Mahmoud, as we mentioned, just a 50% free throw shooter at the line, but. It is a good. Uh, it is a good stroke. You, you think he would make more, but uh, he's a little strong with that one now. And 0 for 3 on the day at the line. Giles is coming over to talk to Coach K. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how long Mike goes with Giles and uh, and when you know. And then now with Jefferson coming in the game, he's only played 19 minutes, so he should be pretty fresh. Mahmoud gets one of the two, and it's a two-point lead. This may be one of those games we don't want to see come to an end real soon. It's got all the earmarks of a classic. I think the coaches would disagree with that. <laughs> <laughs> Roy Williams wouldn't mind. And we've got a tie up. Oh, do we have a foul? Oh, yeah. I think we may. Emil Jefferson's yeah. going to get called. Got that elbow up in there on that attempt to get the ball away from Johnson. And that's the second on Jefferson. This last six minutes may take a while. You may yeah. get your wish, Dan. Yeah. There's yeah. The, the, the whistle and the referees have done a nice job of uh, keeping this game and getting it under control. If you have dinner reservations in Brooklyn, you might have to call ahead and make sure that they keep your table. Especially if it's Peter Luger. <laughs> <laughs> Big miss on the front end of a one and one. Jackson operating at the point. Allen remains on the floor, off the ball. And again, a quick whistle off the ball spotted. Tatum. B.J. King getting that foul. Yeah. He was trying to fight through a pick. Trailing Tatum and picked up his second foul. Well, that's a point of emphasis, Tim, for the referees this year is the freedom of movement. And if you move well without the ball, a lot of times you'll get a handful of jersey, yep. you know, and get the foul. Kennard is good as anybody in the, you know, in the league at doing that and moving and using screens. 
There you see the numbers on Kennard. Three out of four at the line. King comes out of the game now. Mitchell back on the floor, which should tell you how important the next few minutes are to Rick Patino. So number 45 will play with four fouls with this much time left and our seventh tie of the afternoon at 70. I'm curious to see who Mitchell matches up with defensively. Schneider giving it up to Adele. Not as much space there along that three point line. Now he decides to drive and he turns it over. Tatum on the loose. Finds Jackson on the wing. Oh, the iron tantalizingly unkind. Mitchell pumps off the front iron and pulled in by Jackson. I know he's first team, Tim, but I don't know about that shot. I mean, you know, Jackson caught it in rhythm and did the. You know, when things aren't rolling for you, you may want to try to you know, get a little better shot than that. Canard. The nylon song for Luke. He's got 19, and Duke leads by three. Timeout, Rick Patino. It's an interesting building today, and it is packing all the way up to the upper levels today, Mike. And as is always the case of the ACC tournament, when Carolina plays before Duke or vice versa, but particularly when Carolina plays before Duke, they pile on with the opposing team for the Blue Devils, and it, it makes for a highly emotionally charged setting. I always said it's like an old-style political convention. It is. You got these little factions that come together yeah. and form during the course of the game. And there's some filibuster going on that we need to send uh, Dan Rather to on the floor back in the day, you know? Indeed. Great color and pageantry here at the granddaddy of all conference tournaments, the New York Life ACC Tournament. Very important possession coming up here for Louisville. See, here's what I said, Tim. Now, with that timeout, because of the one earlier just to keep possession, Rick Pitino's down to one timeout for the rest of the game. Excellent point. One of the reasons why you harp on it Throughout, yeah, near Mitchell turnover travel. there. Boy, Mitchell saved the day, and you're right. Mahmoud got away with a travel. Snyder with one to shoot to Adele. Pulled away by Kennard. Yeah, I tell you what, for for all the man-to-man, -man, this zone has been pretty kind to Duke in this second half. Yeah, but Louisville's gone deep into the shot clock. Tatum walks. Emotions running high here in Brooklyn. Two of the blue bloods of the game. The Ville, the Devils, for a right to play the heels. Stay right where you are. It doesn't get any better. About great shooters. One thing I can't understand in this half, Louisville, 11 of their 24 field goal attempts have been threes. They were so successful going inside. They haven't figured out the zone yet, though. Yeah, and they've missed their last seven three pointers. They find themselves down by a tray right now. Here they are back inside where Patino, I'm sure, wants it. And he gets the roll inside from Spalding. Finally. You, you know, it, it just it, it made no sense. I, I talked earlier about falling in love with the jump shot. Kennard pulls up at the free throw line. Well, he's well, he's got it all, and he's a true leader for this team. There was there was some confusion defensively because he got left. He stopped his dribble, and you know. Guy with the ball is pretty dangerous. You got to cover him, and he had a white. I think he was surprised how wide open he was. Adele from downtown again. Last eight three pointers have not fallen for Louisville. And there have been these games before for them where they just simply could not make shots. They've had droughts. Their defense has usually bailed them out. 
And it's usually an outstanding defense. That's the way Patino's teams historically play. Tatum tries to blow by Spalding. Can't. Loose ball, Snyder. A blow by for him, and he's fouled by Jackson, I think, perhaps, or is it Allen? We'll see. It's going to be Grayson Allen, and that's a break. That's the third on Allen. I thought on that play that Emil Jefferson just dribbled himself into trouble, and uh, that turnover, this one of the first runs up the floor that Louisville has had off of a turnover in a while. I'll tell you, Jackson was really happy Grayson Allen was there with him to pick up that foul because he was certainly in position to get it. Snyder well aware that number 15's got four fouls. Well, defending him. Louisville leaving a lot of uh, a lot of points at the free throw line now 10 of 19 in the game. Fortunate that this was a two shot violation so he's able to pick up one of them. And we're down to a one possession game. One more Duke, one more Duke foul both teams will be in the double bonus. to Tatum. Wow, what a kick out. You know what? I just I like the aggressive move by Grayson Allen who's going right at uh, right at Mitchell to make him uh, defend. 25 in the game for Tatum. And there's a foul. Easy one to call there against Jefferson. His third. Yeah, see the look, and Mitchell's got to be a little passive right there. And what it does, that drive dr dr brings in Ray Spaulding. Tatum had a great look. You bet that was a three. You know, for Tatum, you almost have to make him a no help guy. You know, it just, all right, you know, you get beat off the dribble, you get beat off the dribble. These three throws become so important, and Matthew unable to get the first one to go. 66% on the season. Seventy-eight, seventy-four. Well, uh, now for the first time, and you see the Louisville amping up the pressure a little bit. There's a trap against Jackson. Well, Jefferson really took it right to the limit, but he didn't have to burn a timeout to get the ball in bounds. Two remaining for Duke, as Mike pointed out, just one for Louisville. Yeah, get over it. Get over it. Oh, oh. Kennard goes reversal, rejected. Jefferson saves to Jackson. Off the heel, and it's pulled I, down by Adele. And I don't know that Mike Krzyzewski didn't want some more clock run that time. They had a fresh 30 seconds. Probably would have been better to run some time. Snyder. Boy, a contortionist underneath trying to get that one up on the rim. Loose ball, Tatum, I believe is going to say was on the end line. Mike Eads right there. The ball will be Dukes. Here's the look inside. This is real time, and you got bodies all over the place. Yeah, they're going to. What, what happened there? It looked like Spalding was on the uh, end line when he had the ball. Yeah. You look at our reset, you see the double bonus, the situation for both now the rest of the way. The timeout story important, and Duke can stop it twice. Arrow going to Louisville, Louisville just once, and the possession arrow now to Louisville. On a tie ball. And here's Tatum's value against pressure being able to bring the ball out of the backcourt. K wants them to dig into the shot clock in this sequence. This is the guy that should have the rock up against the clock. Rejected beautifully by Mathieu. Numbers for Snyder. And he'll get to the line. Well, here's the play. I mean, this is just a massive block from the weak side, and it triggers the break. And uh, Snyder does a nice job pressing the action. Going right at Grayson Allen, and the, you didn't need the three right then. So a good job. Stop the clock with the uh, with the foul shots. Now well, uh, somebody needs to step up and make some. Tatum got the foul. That's the number. That's number four on him. Well, and the issues at the line continue. This time Snyder missing the front end. 
Yeah, Rick, yeah, Rick Pitino won't have to look very far in the stat sheet if, if they do lose this game to see why. Snyder 73% on the year and he can't get it to go. The second converted of four opportunities today and it's 78 75. Here comes that pressure again. Pinching in the corner. They're going to make them play defense for all of the seconds on this sequence. Well, there's 17 seconds between shot and game clock, so Louisville does not have to foul in this situation. Mike wants a timeout. Of course, he has to get one of his players to ask for it, and Allen did. Only eight seconds left on the shot clock, 26.2 remaining in the game. Ebb and flow of the game has been incredible, a lot of runs. I do think emotionally Duke's uh, surge, their, their resurgence on the floor really did come when the emotions got high with that situation with uh, Levitch. But after that, they really gained composure, took control. Yeah, and, uh, and you know, and Grayson Allen settled down. They started knocking down some shots. And uh, in this situation, I want to design a play that's going to the rim. You know, attack the basket. But, you know, there's their shot blockers in there, but. Um, you know, if you feel like you can kick out for a three, that's fine. But uh, get one for a two. Eight seconds left on the shot clock, though. So you, you got to be aware right, of that right away. You got to go right away. So that's the story in these closing moments. What Duke can do with these eight seconds left on the shot clock. And brought to you by the Chevy dealers. Goes to Kennard. There's a steal off the inbounds. To Snyder gets it, and a quick timeout taken. Or was that a foul? No, a foul. It's Tatum who committed his fifth foul. Well, I thought for a moment maybe Patino wanted a quick timeout. Tatum, after the turnover, gets tagged with the personal, and he is done. Yeah, and that, well, he saw right here. on the catch, Allen took his eyes off the ball. He was looking. Snyder just stepped right in, very opportunistic. Well, Rick Patino says, "All right, make two, and we need a quick foul here." Yeah. yeah. Uh, if Tatum was just in the wrong spot after the turnover yeah, and, uh, and, and couldn't get out of his way and Patino was able to communicate that to his team without having to call a timeout. What a break for Lul. Well, again you're going Jefferson is the poorest free throw shooter out there. He's going to be taking the ball inbound with everybody else solid at the line. <laughs> We said it may be a classic. <laughs> 23.4 remaining, and that's in regulation. Jones is going to trigger it in. Allen, Kennard, Jefferson on the floor as Jones looks for and finds Kennard. And a quick foul given up by Spalding. Yeah, and they took they took Donovan Mitchell out of the game just so he didn't wasn't put in a, uh, the position of having to take the foul, which would have been his fifth. Kennard, just under 85 percent on the year at the free throw line, is the guy that you certainly want at the line if you are Coach K. This one has been as advertised. I still think there's enough time, Tim, that if even if Duke makes both of these and makes it a three-point game, that you can get a rush as quickly as Louisville is getting the ball at the floor. You can get a rush, take two points, maybe get an old-fashioned three-point play, and then still play the foul game. Well, Louisville has missed their last eight threes. They're gonna. Likely look for one or not. That's the determination that's got to be made right here. We're going to find out right away. Matthew taking a lot of time. Are they, are they ever? Snyder's finally got it. Looks for an induced foul. Does not get it. Loose ball. Kennard is fouled. I'm a little surprised by that. No, that, that was just not. And Rick Pitino is giving his team an earful right now, and uh, that was just too slow developing. It was 12 seconds before they even started to make a play, and then you get a bad shot on top of it. The ball got to Matthew and it just stuck with him too long, and that's a it's a good non-call yep. right there on that shot, and Kennard uh, comes up with it. 
Only four ticks left, and Kennard can essentially put it away right here. And a rubber match with North Carolina would await. Who would have thought after yesterday <laughs> that Grayson Allen would play as prominent a role oh, in this win you know, and today. Congratulations to that young man. Yep. And to all of those that have taken their shots. He responded in a very large way. That's it. Duke advances to the semifinals for a rubber match opportunity against the North Carolina Tar Heels. 81 to 77. Our final. And he passes Dean Smith now for the all time record for most wins in ACC tournament play. And it seems taking some time chatting with Donovan.